Welcome. This is welcome. This is Dr. Paul Dyer. Welcome to Bridges Live. You can now always listen to me on iHeart and iTunes Radio and Apple Podcasts. You can always reach me at drpaulholisticscience.com. And Bridges Live is about getting people from here to there, information, understanding, and action. And I'd like to thank all my sponsors who has allowed me to keep doing this for over a couple years of interviewing some amazing people that is doing some lighted work in this world. I know we are in tough times and people say it's tough times, but I don't believe it's tough times. I just believe that it is time for us to shine the brightness that we are and, and give the gift of service to humanity. And so I like to bring on my guests. You know that on Bridges Live. And you can always see my other podcast on Weekly Wednesday with Dr. Paul. But today I want to bring on Jasmira. Jasmira. I pronounced that right, right? Yeah, Jasmira. It's perfect. <laughs> Please introduce yourself to Bridges Live. Okay. So like you said, my name is Jasmira Smothers. Um, I'm currently located in the Maryland. Um, right now, I am a young entrepreneur. I am also a motivational speaker and a self-published author as well. When you say young, you just made me feel old because, oh, my goodness. So, yeah. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. When you say young, and I know a lot of people, when they listen to Bridges Live or a podcast, they probably do hear differences of my voice and age or your voice and age because this is podcast. So if you don't mind, you want to tell the young community how young you are? Does that matter or would you mind? Um, so I am 23, and I believe that that matters because it my does goal matter. Is to help, yeah, my goal is to help young people to feel inspired and empowered, and be to believe in themselves the same way that I believe in myself at the age of 23. Because it does matter. Because when I know when when people hear, and this is why I love doing what I do as far as servicing humanity, servicing the community, and then doing the podcast or Bridges Live, is because I want people to hear themselves and what who we are. And sometimes people say, well, Dr. Paul, you've lived this life and that's not me. And I, and I try to inspire you or to aspire you so you can say, I can also do this. But when you, when a person who is of your age of 23, maybe someone who can hear this who's 23, 20, whatever, and say, me too. I can also do what Jasmir is doing. So tell us what you're doing. Yes, yeah, so um, I've decided that, you know, it's funny because I'm actually a teacher's assistant at Kinder Care here. And a lot of people believe that when you're doing everything else that I'm doing, it's impossible when you have a full-time job or things like that. So uh, to start off, I'm a teacher's assistant at Kinder Care. Uh, when I say that I'm a young entrepreneur, that is because I have my own mentoring business, both in person and virtually. Um, and I'm also trying to uh, inspire the young black men within my community. Um, and I'll be having my first event actually next Saturday, uh, February the 15th, or actually this Saturday, the 15th, um, where I'll be speaking to young men about entrepreneurship and self-worth just to help them with growing as a person. Um, and my first book that I self-published is called Playing with the Cards That You've Been Dealt, mm. uh, where I use I use the analogy of a card game compared to life. So when you're playing, when you're dealt a hand of cards, you never know what you're going to get, but you still have to play in order to win. Absolutely. You know, when you're talking about talking to young black men, talking to young black women, and talking to the youth of our community, there's a lot of despair. And we'll get into that later and talk about the book. But I want to hear, how did you become inspired to do what you're doing, and how did you find your gift? So it all started, um, I have a two-year-old little boy, and a lot of people do not know that until they get to know me. Um, so as a single mom, at one point, I was a stay-at-home mom. And I knew there was something that I could do with my story, but I didn't know what it truly was. Um, because not only am I a single mom, but I also struggle with bipolar depression. Uh, so with the mental health situation, with being a single mom, with, you know, doing all these things at one time, at that point when I was a stay-at-home mom, I decided to start a blog. Um, and when I started that blog, it was called Young Gifted and a Mama. And when I was writing those blogs and posting them, uh, a lot of the young women were inspired, but then it was like young men were touched as well. So I realized that I was doing something and my story was changing lives every time I posted something. So I took that story from my blog and ended up 
publishing a book. Once I hit those 42,000 word counts, I was like, I have something. Let's do it, you know? So uh, not only did my son inspire me, but my story inspired me as well, and I use it to help others. You know, and I believe, and, you know, we've heard this before in, in the old adage of song, a testimony helps um, test ourselves and helps teach us. So our testimony helps test us and it helps teach us. Mm -hmm. And so it, it has tested you and now you're teaching it because we all have a story. We, we really mm -hmm. do. And we all have a blessed story. It is not so much story of struggle, but a story of lessons to be learned so we can put in the pieces to what we are needing, where we're wanting to go. Some people say, you know, it's funny, I've heard this phrase before that when we buy a, a, a puzzle um, that's in a box, we trust that the manufacturer has put all 100 pieces in there and that it's mm -hmm. going to turn out to be the picture that it is said it's going to be. And yet yeah. we don't trust that all the puzzles that we are going through in our lives is going to be turning out to the picture that you can manifest it to be. Mm, I like that. I like that. So what are some of the struggles that you see from, and I have children, and I have children, and we all deal with what you call um, chem, uh, chemical depression, meaning that sometimes things are not balanced as well as we would like to in an equilibrium, and, I, and, and so we need certain things to balance us out. So what do you uh -huh. believe, because as a holistic educator, you know, it doesn't mean I don't believe in, in, in chemicals, but how did you find out about your bipolar? Um, so there was a point in time, um, and I'm a very open person, so yeah. I should let everyone that's listening know that, but uh, there was a point in time where I was uh, contemplating suicide. Um, and when I was contemplating suicide, you know, my mind was telling me that I wanted to die, but my heart was saying, you have a purpose. So being that my heart was telling me that I had a purpose, I ended up getting the help that I needed when I was admitted to um, the hospital. And when I was admitted to the hospital, that's when we went over the timeline of my life from the time that I was 13 up until the time I went to the hospital, which is when I was 19 years old. And we realized that something was happening because when I say bipolar depression, that doesn't mean that I'm bipolar, but it means right. that my depressive yes. states are bipolar. Yes. So within a matter of minutes, you know, I could be the happiest person and then the next minute I could be so sad and gloomy and not even have a reason. But the reason was because there was a chemical imbalance, like you said, and now that I am medicated, I'm able to live a regular life, being that I got the help that I needed, even though my family and friends would say, we don't take medication, <laughs> it's not a thing, it's just everyday life, you'll be fine, yeah. you'll get off. So, yeah, I definitely had to, you know, accept the fact that I needed the help first. Yes. And then I also had to, I, I had to stop the views from other people from determining what I wanted to do for myself. So it, it made a big difference being okay with needing help. You know, being okay with being okay, because I too also, I attempted to commit suicide, wanted to commit suicide because of what I was going through. And yet that led me through my purpose too. I knew where, I knew all the things I knew and yet I, I, I come out to the other side. So I, I also understand exactly where you're at. And that's why I try to teach to all people, young men, young black men, just people that there's a living science to us you mm -hmm. can learn the living science and that's what i teach is the living sciences there's a lot of things involved in understanding your chemical biology understanding your emotional education and how it affects your organs how it affects your life and then yet once you get that information now i believe this is what my thoughts are mm -hmm. that now you have a choice to live or to survive yeah. And I choose life to live and not just survive it. So mm. what is your talk mostly? What have you found out about young people your age, not even with the child or the things you've been through? What do you find out? Because people in my mid-50s are always saying, we don't understand this generation. So what is it that we're missing? Uh, so growing up in this generation, uh, you're judged very often. Um, so, you know, like I said, in my community as a young black woman, it's not, it's frowned upon to, you know, go to therapy. It's frowned upon to be open and honest about committing suicide and, you know, uh, needing the help and being medicated and all of those things. So a lot of people, they shut down in my generation and they keep it all inside. 
causing them to, you know, in return, be angry and be upset. So you have all these young black men in Baltimore County that are killing each other, but it's because they're, they're pressing down something and they're allowing themselves to react in a negative way because that's all they've been taught and that's just what they've been introduced to as young men. Um, so that is why I'm deciding and making the decision to help them with discovering that there there could be something chemically wrong with you. And there may not be something chemi- chemically wrong with you, but you have to figure out how to manage your emotions and how to honestly, you know, become better by becoming one with yourself. A lot of people in my generation aren't one with themselves. They, you know, they use the opinions of others to live out their lives. They seek validation in people that don't even matter, and they don't know how to love themselves as much as you would say the average person knows how to love themselves. And, so and, but, J- J- Jasmine, we, we try to teach that you can love yourself, or is it just mm-hmm. that there's not enough of us teaching mm-hmm. it or they're not seeing us? That That's exactly it. One, there's not enough people teaching them and loving on them when they do something wrong. So they're frowned upon when they're, you know, when they're gay or when they're, uh, you know, a gang member or whatever it is, people frown upon them and then they categorize them. And there's certain ones that they're going to love on and there's other ones that they're going to avoid in order to save their own lives, as some of them would say. So uh, there's definitely a lack of people that are interested in helping them. And then there's also a lot of people that frown upon them in the older generations because we're not the same as they used to be things have changed so much that we make them uncomfortable and they don't want to get involved with what we have going on so yeah it's it's being frowned upon and then there's a lack of uh leadership as well so now you know when i hear that it's being you know i hear this and it and it hurts it hurts a person like me who gives it hurts a person like me and people like me and there's others like me. I'm not alone. I know I don't stand alone and we're never alone. And you've said it yourself. Once you realize what we are, we're not alone and we're here to do the work that we're here to do. Now, how do what we're, it's, it's now, it's in my head. I'm, you're teaching me. Thank you. And mm-hmm. I'm, and I'm trying to connect with where do I go reach these people and say, brother, sister, I am here. Uh, yes, yeah, so like I said, I'm having my event next uh, this Saturday. <laughs> I can't believe it's already here, but this Saturday I'm having my own event, and it cost me nothing to put this event together. I decided to do it at the Central Branch Library where I was given a free space because I'm opening the door for free for people to bring their nephews and their grandsons and all those people into this space. So one, you know, involving yourself in what's going on. So opening mm-hmm. up a space for them to come to, promoting it, you know, introducing them to something different. Because a lot of them want something different, but they don't know how to ask for it. Yeah. So putting yourself out there and letting them know that you are available for free to do this for them, that makes a difference. You know, because a lot of people are charging for events and it's mm-hmm. so much money. And the young people, don't they don't have the money to come to the event. They don't. You know? So you have to... You have to, I I like to say you have to do the work of God because you're loving on his children without even, you know, asking for anything in return. You just want to help from your heart. So, you know, opening the doors for them, creating events for them. And something that I do as a motivational speaker, I I attend events even if I'm not the speaker because you never know who you may meet. So I try and, and stay observative of the atmosphere and whoever I see that I still just needs a, hey, how are you doing? I approach them. I know we don't have much time, and yet I would love to have you. I hope I'm going to ask, tell Bridges Live. Thank you for having Miss Jasmine on. We're going to have you back on. But first, let's tell us where we can get your book, and then mm-hmm. we will get right into what the book is talking about, because we know it's car- the cards you're dealt. But where can we get your book? Uh, so my book is available on Amazon. Um, you can get it directly on Amazon, or if you connect with me on social media, I'll be sure to send out a, a personally signed copy to you if you're interested in that way as well. And uh, what what's the social media? Are you, uh, you just will just attach it to the link uh, once people see it on there, or you just want to get what's what's what is the social media that we're looking for? Yes. Yeah, so my um, my signature name is Jasmine Janae because that's my middle name. And that's all my platforms. So you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, all of my platforms under Jasmine Janae, even when you search up my book as well. And Janae is spelled J-A-N-A-Y. 
Alrighty. So, and, and, and what's an email they can get you or they can get to get through all that on Jasmine and Janae? Could you spell Jasmine for us so people don't get that mix, mixed up? Yes. So Jasmine is J-A-Z-M-I-E-R-A. And my email address is jasmiras at gmail.com. And you can also find that on my website as well. That is so beautiful. Now, tell us a little bit about the book that people could be like, that makes sense, especially with the cards being dealt. I know we seem like we play things that we don't know what we're being dealt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, like I said, I'm a teacher's assistant at Kinder Care, but this is a part of the process because me being a teacher at Kinder Care is a sacrifice because my son comes here for a cheaper rate. And being that he's coming for a cheaper rate, he has this education of a $500 worth of value. So that's making a sacrifice, but I have to deal that card and keep it because that's helping my son. So in my book, I encourage people to use what you've been given and learn how to live your best life. Even if you're not satisfied with that nine to five that you have, use that one hour break that you're given to contribute to whatever your dreams are, you know? So find the time to live out your best life by using what you've already been given. So I encourage and empower every age group. You'd be surprised. Even women 50 or 60 years old have been touched and inspired by the words that are in my book. So I just tell you to learn how to live your best life with what you've already been given. That is a blessing. Thank you so much, Jasmine. And again, I want to thank you so much for you. You know, it doesn't matter what age we are. You said that we can learn and inspire each other, and I and I and I've learned so much throughout all my guesses throughout these years. No matter who they are, where they come from, what country they come from, and 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 I say this with such a with such a lifted heart that light workers got to do the light for the darkness because there are mm-hmm. people who are out there don't know that they are they feel like they're alone they feel like they're afraid they feel they feel all these things and yet we we still have to go into the depths of them and pull them out because we can because and that's yep. and that is what you're doing so thank you so much Thank you. Thank you for having me. So thank you everyone for listening to Bridges Live. Of course, you can always download the podcast. And it's funny that I think people are downloading the podcast a lot more of the older shows and they're catching up to the newer shows. But again, you can always reach me on DrPaulHolisticScience.com. And you can always ask questions. And then thank you for your questions that, that you send me an email at DrPaulWDyer at gmail.com. Thank you so much, everyone. You guys have a blessed year. Thank you daily and i'll catch everyone next monday on bridges live